What's up, everyone? This is Angelo coming at you with episode 230 of Spinning Thoughts. My special guest is Pool Kids, and we talked to all four of them. Christine, Nicolette, Andy, Caden. They all joined me, and we dive into their upcoming full-length self-titled record due for release on July the 22nd via Skeletal Lightning. They are having a busy week month summer 2022 this week they just dropped a new single off the self-titled it's called i hope you're right it has a music video alongside it they're heading out on tour with into it over it we talk about all of this here in episode 230 but the band's so busy that we didn't even get to talk about them announcing support for another tour with origami angel it's a good time to be in the band pool kids to be a fan of of Pool Kids and to have a music podcast and interview the band Pool Kids. If you like this kind of content, make sure you give it a like, a comment, and that you're subscribed on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All of these things really help us continue to give you all this free music content. We're on all social media at Spin Thoughts, and we have premiere episodes every Thursday at midnight Eastern on Adobe Radio. Thank you to everybody who stays up nice and late and straddles that time zone with us. We love you, Adobe Radio, and everybody who tunes in for those weekly premieres. Without any further wait, let's dive into my conversation with all four members of Pool Kids. All right, so I am very excited to talk to my guests, Christine, Nicolette, Caden, and Andy from Pool Kids. Friends, welcome to Spinning Thoughts. Hello. Hi. Happy to be here. So, you know, I um, we have a lot to cover here, but I, I, I got to ask, I know we talked briefly before we started recording. Uh, it, it seems like, you know, some of you are just in some interesting positions here right now. What, what's the what's yeah. the vibe? What was going on uh, last night and heading into today? <laughs> yeah, you're catching pool kids at a very interesting time right now. Um, Nicola and I live together in this apartment in Chicago, and we threw a big housewarming party, and the whole band was here for it. We were up until like five in the morning, and like I dragged everyone out of bed for this. I um, watched the sun come up yesterday. Yeah, the sun did start coming up. Um, yeah, so th- there might be frequent bathroom breaks um, throughout this. <laughs> hey, nothing pool. wrong with that. Uh, we're here to, to have a good time, to talk music, and um, just kind of dive into things. So I'm glad that you made it. I'm glad that you had a good time last night. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, this will hopefully be an entertaining uh, conversation with pool kids. So, friends, at the time of this taping, we're around a, a little over a month until the self-titled album releases out into the world i'm sure there's a spectrum of 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 like thoughts and emotions as you lead up to a release talk to me about where you're at what you're thinking right now at this stage of heading into this really exciting release um i've felt pretty like i thought i would be dying more like sitting on the record you know being like oh i just want to come out i want to come out but we've just been so busy with getting shit done like we'd filmed the music videos at like the last minute possible and just <laughs> stuff like that and now we're preparing for tour i'm so just like distracted by everything else that i'm i'm not that like i'm not like dying like you know yeah it's like kind of hitting us in the face now it's like, yeah it's like there's been like a couple of like random wake-up calls like every once in a while we'll like receive like an email being from jamie our pr person who connected us for this like being like hey you need to do this or hey you need to fill out these legal forms from our label or something like that and there's like oh my god it's happening yeah but nothing but excitement yeah Yeah, it uh it feels really good honestly because you know we've we've put one song out uh i guess at this point like 20 days ago or something like that 15 days ago two weeks ago whatever it's uh, around that amount of time and the reception was like so overwhelmingly positive that mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, I, I I can't wait to put out the rest of the record. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It was also nice because it was the first new music in four years. So it was really, really cool to see people that still cared. Right. Like, and actually like, were like genuinely excited. Gearing up for that. Yeah. Like, oof. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. I, I have, could, go ahead. I was going to say, I have seen a lot of people on social media just getting really excited and rallying up behind the first single, and now you guys are gearing up for that second. So, yeah, I mean, it's palpable. Uh, people are ready for this. Yeah, I mean, we stretched nine songs, like, longer than I think I've seen any band <laughs> stretch such a small amount of songs, like, four years off of nine songs. So, 
you know, it's it's great that there's anyone still waiting around <laughs> for us. So there's been a lot of mitigating circumstances the last couple of years, I'm sure, that have played Absolutely. into that time yeah. frame. Yeah. And uh, look, at this point, I'm just so stoked to see bands that are still doing the thing, you know, going out there, touring, dropping new music. And um, so it's good to see the self-title coming from Pool Kids. Um, now, your band, in my opinion, is one of the more sonically diverse and interesting bands around right now. What influences this sound and, and what can we expect to hear with the self-titled album? Um, what influences it? I honestly don't know. It's just kind of what comes out of us. I don't really have like an explanation for it. Um, what to expect. Uh, we have some moments on the record that we feel are like true to our previous sound, which there, there's a chunk that feel that way. Physics Baby, the first single we feel like is one of those. We tried to release a song that like, oh, this is what people maybe would expect. And then there's lots of I don't know. We'd say there's moody chunks of the album is just what we call it, like slower, I don't know, moody stuff. And then there's Twilight soundtrack. Twilight there's soundtrack. Twilight soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. Very Twilight soundtrack. And then there's some straight up just hype, overly hype, like way more so than previous pool kids. There's like a section of that. And then I don't know. Uh, we also like talked a lot about like Lincoln Park and Evanescence when we were making this. <laughs> yeah. This record. So I feel like that comes through in like some like surprising ways. Yeah. So uh, I dive into that a little bit more. I mean, why Lincoln Park Evanescence? Like, is, is this uh, your jam? Like, or is there like truly like elements that will be felt in this release? I think it's something about how, you know, those groups like strove for a little bit of an, an, an anthemic sound, you know, <laughs> and we, kind of fell into that like not on purpose but <laughs> yeah. it's just yeah what came out yeah and uh I I would definitely say like the producer that we worked with Mike Vernon Davis was a huge part of that you know helping us create something that was a little bit more like maximalist than what we you know went into the studio with like everything that we played you know prior to entering the studio like that is on the record but there's an extra so sheen of like you know uh magic dust or whatever you want to call it from the <laughs> yeah. from the studio when we first met with mike it was like so how do you want this to sound in terms of like minimalism maximalism and i was like what do you mean and he's like you know like guitars bass drums or i was like no i was like pedal to the metal with maximalism i was like i do not want this record just to sound like a four piece you know yeah band and we definitely <laughs> did that um, I mean, each of us were playing like random shit, you know, 10 to 12 instruments each on the record. <laughs> you know, there's no like trumpet or violin, but if we maybe there's had, yeah. yeah, there's <laughs> timpani, there's theremin, Marimba. there's Marimba, there's um, U bass, which is like ukulele bass, banjo, trash cans, yeah. trash cans, one scooter bow, yeah, a bowl of water. <laughs> A bowl of water. Yeah, yeah. I'm a getting... tuning fork. Yeah. What What's the bowl of water <laughs> used for? Okay. Yeah. Oh, so if you like put a bowl of water and like, so we put it on top of like a. Uh, it's just like a mic on a bowl. Yeah, we literally like, <laughs> picked up a bowl of water. I will, I'll look for a photo. That's not, you'll, okay. It makes sense. And then he got watch. tuning forks. Yeah. And so I forget which key the song was in. So we just took the tuning fork of that song, hit it, and then submerged it. So it just made like a really cool sound. It goes like, Dew! you'll hear it on the song further. Oh, wow. Okay. That's really exciting. It'll, you'll be like, oh, that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wait to hear that now. And some of these uh, instruments, I mean, I, I'm sure like, you know, maybe you don't have to be professionally trained in all of them to be able to make it work. But I mean, was there any instrument that is kind of random that pushed you? Like what, what was the most random like to actually execute? Was it hard to do these random instruments at all or no? It was, we were just like, fuck around. Honestly. Yeah. There was never any like pressure of like, this we need this part and you need to play it, it was yeah just like the bowl of water <laughs> that, wait that's the bowl of water yeah <laughs> man if nfts weren't so annoying you could I definitely bowl. go ahead and do an nft of that <laughs> <laughs> you can get the bowl of water nft from the pool kids <laughs> yeah. it, honestly it was kind of the type of thing where if if someone was like trying something and it wasn't working i feel like we either were just like okay whatever just don't do it or someone else would just give it a go until yeah. it works like it was just a big that, that's really cool. And I'm looking forward to um, 
hearing all these different sounds um, and and it really kind of adds to what I said earlier about your band sonically being one of the more diverse and interesting bands as I quote myself from earlier so <laughs> really stoked for that and uh, Andy you kind of talked I think a little bit about the studio stuff um, I know he may have walked oh there he is hey Andy <laughs> Jesus, uh, I'm still here I'm like a gargoyle on the bed <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> I, I love this. Um, for, for, this is for all of you, though. I mean, are there any moments from the studio time that stand out, whether it's like a song that turned out differently than what maybe the demos were like or what you were going for? Or maybe there was a song that pushed you all as a band or even like one of you individually, just anything like that, any moments that stand out? Uh, song specifically? I think I'm... when we, uh, I think we started with the song further first. And we yeah. did the like pre-production first. We like went into the studio, played the song a few times, rearranged things and then started tracking. And then we came like Mike, the producer made us stay in the room for a little bit. He's like, oh, I'm gonna do something. And we came in and he added like some textures and it was like, oh, like it was like the first time being like, that's what a producer does. And yeah. Like, yeah. Being like, this is gonna be crazy. Yeah. We're all just kind of like looking at each other, You're like, like all right. Like so we like have like like we went in like pretty much knowing like having like most of the forms kind of squared away for like all the songs, knowing the like, chords and like we had a couple of like mystery spots, but pretty much everything was like fully written and like performable from the band. It was just like, so what is this guy gonna do at this point? And he even kind of looked at us. He was like, y'all came in with like- Hella prepared, yeah. Way more prepared than I was expecting. Yeah. Um, but like, it's hard to pick out one moment just cause I'll be honest, like the entire time we were making that album when we were, we were went out to Seattle to do it, like was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's no like one like magic moment or it's like one song that like felt like- I feel like what's more like specific than others. like. What that song I like changed the, the most? That, mm. I don't think I, I feel like most of the songs were like eighty to eighty-five percent. Well, way Snarf there. Squad went through, but that went through its most yeah before the studio. That had some fucking <laughs> dark moments. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a song. What the fuck is it actually called? Arms, 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 Arms Length. Length. We the Snarf Squad was like the work working title, so I keep calling it that. But um, <laughs> had another working title. <laughs> yeah. Coconuts. There is one song that like started out as just like kind of a like pretty dreamy like moody song and then oh actually no 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 it had the tappy part in the beginning I don't know whatever it, it, it sounded cool like when it was like a demo just one like guitar and then for some reason bringing it together as a full band playing it exactly how it is in the demo it sounded like it sounded welcome like some, to Kokomo Island yeah <laughs> it sounded like Donkey Kong Country for <laughs> Super Nintendo kind of like that I kind of like that vibe way. in the like, worst way in the worst way like, we, I literally we had this moment of like are we a horrible band? Like, <laughs> I know. But we, and then we ended up just totally taking the guts out of that song and turning it into like, we stopped the like, boom, 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 like tappy stuff. And we just made it like a, da -da, like just cordy, more straight, like, straightforward rock. Yeah. Moments. And now it's great. And we play it live and like people love it and stuff. And we salvaged it. But yeah, that, that one changed a lot the most, I guess I would say. And I know that we've been talking about the studio time. I want to actually kind of look at what happens prior to the studio, which is more the writing process. Mm -hmm. This is a question I'm always super, super intrigued by um, different responses from bands. And it, sometimes it's not as magical as maybe one might think. But I am curious, how do you all go about writing songs and maybe more specifically uh, the writing process for the songs on the self-titled? Is there a formula that you've kind of come to find that works uh, or is it more of a spontaneous thing per song or per moment? Uh, definitely not on the spontaneous end, I would say. It always just like kind of starts as a just demo that I have um, that it, I just record on either GarageBand or Pro Tools and the two opposites. And then <laughs> I bring it to the band and I don't know then that's when all like, yeah, shit starts changing pretty good. it gets like torn apart from there yeah. pretty much like i'd say the foundation remains the same you know there's like yeah. a mood or a um a vibe that that christine is going for and we kind of just like tinker with it until we feel you know there's some comfort and then we 
shelve it, come back to it. Like yeah. there's a lot of back and forth. Like these songs from, you know, demo to recorded version are pretty different from one another. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell where they're going, but yeah, it's it's definitely been a cool process. Like working with Nicolette and Caden and Christine, just like figuring out like how everyone's brain works. You know? Yeah, it, it, it's it's funny. Like you definitely get a feel for like very specifically how everyone's different brain like works. It's it's funny. You know? We're twisted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is like the first time the four of us have written music together. So right. it's uh you know, there's there's songs on the album where I'm like, this was like at the beginning of the writing process and this one was at the end. And yeah. the songs that were at the end, I'm like, damn, LP3 is going to go. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There might be some twists and turns in the future. Uh, well, we, we won't jump ahead to LP3 just yet. We'll wait for July the 22nd to come around and, 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 and let you enjoy some of that for a while. Um, I have started I have started some demos for LP3, but... The grind, the, the, the grind never ends. The grind never ends. Have you guys been on Skeletal Lightning the entirety of the band in terms of being signed? So we actually started out with no one. Like we technically released Safe Sex already. And then Skeletal Lightning sent us an email. Um, and also we had tried. We had, I had sent the record to a lot of people and no one was interested. <laughs> um, Sekiros was put it up. Oh yeah, stack your okay. Yeah, explain that. So there's a label out of Canada called Stack Your Rosters, which is ran by a guy named William Osiki and David Mitchell. David Mitchell plays in Goldfer, and then William works for Top Shelf. And so it was oh. like a little math label, and we were kind of the resurgent band they didn't put out anything in a while because that wasn't one of their own projects. And, and then so, they didn't put out anything after yeah. either. <laughs> like you were like, oh, they came back. No. And then, but yeah, they reached out, and we we're like. The big thing was like getting on uh, streaming platforms. So like that was fucking cool. Yeah, I didn't know how to, I did not know how to do that. So they just like did that for us, which is <laughs> sick. That um, was like the yeah. selling point. They're being put on Spotify. I'm like, I was like, I don't know how to yeah, do that. But, but beyond that, they really didn't like do much. And like, they were very small, like at most like a quote unquote, like tape label. Um, yeah. And they were just kind of like friends, like helping us out more than anything. Yeah. And then about a month and a half or two after the album came out, Music to Practice Safe Sex 2, we got a random email out of the blue yeah. from the team at Skeletal Lightning. And they were like, they just heard us and we came up on their Spotify. And yeah. They, oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And then we just kind of like, you know, talked to them a little bit and we're like, I think these people seem like they have really good intentions, actually. Like, yeah, I guess we'll work with them. Yeah, and we were right. So it's like a, it was a really interesting email. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Sean's going to watch this and he already knows where it's going. Yeah, I was going to say, do we call yeah. him out? OK, the header of the email was like, Skeletal Lightning plus pool party. And like, he got her fucking name wrong. Yeah, no. <laughs> it became yeah. like a very wholesome joke between us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's r- yeah. that is uh <laughs> shots sitting there like oh my god right yeah. <laughs> hey you know it, it sounds like um sounds like no harm done right because here oh, we exactly. are um uh, yeah, yeah. I, I actually haven't talked to a lot of bands uh from skeletal skeletal lightning's roster one of my favorites on their label is harmony woods uh talk to me about what it's like working with skeletal no. lightning and what's their approach to supporting bands on their roster hands off like (laughs) in the the best way yeah they let us do what we want to do and they try to facilitate facilitate that excuse me as best as they can and that's the dream their approach is literally just like what are your goals what do you want to do and like what do you need for us to help you that's like their whole thing and there's never like you should do this or you need to do it. It's like, yeah. what do you want to do and how can we help? Like, yeah. like once again, there was four years between the releases and Sean never once was like, what's the next record? <laughs> yeah. He was and, just like, take your time. It's going to be great. Like you guys are awesome. It's like, like it's a passion project for them. Yeah. Like they're, they're in it for like, they want to help bands. Yeah. yeah. And they- it's like, amazing. Like they're extremely communicative, supportive, kind, yeah. um, I just like I cannot say enough nice things about the team um, mm-hmm. that makes up Skeletal, and we're like crazy thankful to be working with them, yeah. especially for this upcoming release. They give like very massive parent vibes. Like they're so proud of you. Like, they <laughs> love and support. Yeah. It's just like 
immense. You want to say hi to Jalen and Carter? They're sleeping on our floor right now. Yeah, that's another bad <laughs> That's also a skeletal lightning. <laughs> Please. Nicholas says no, but you can just cut it out if they don't want if they don't No, want no, it. this is perfectly fine. <laughs> Jillian Carter, say hi. They're asking about skeletal lightning. Hey, hey, yo. what's up? I'm Angelo from Spinning Thoughts on Adobe Radio. You guys are gonna make this episode. <laughs> Is it skeletal lightning? Great. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, make a record come out. I can't say when actually because it's not been announced, but it's relatively soon. So and? If another band if you want to talk to, they're like no. incredible people. What do you do on that album? Oh, I play drums on that record too. Jeez, you guys are all over the place. I like it in in a good way. You're all over the place. <laughs> yes, but yeah, no, that record is really cool and like yeah, it's was a slammer. If you are interested in hearing like a record about four drummers being on it and all this other stuff too, like that's got to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Well, everybody's got to check out uh, Skeletal Lightning and all of the bands on their roster. Definitely a fan over here. Uh, the la- one of the last questions I want to ask about the album before we dive into a few more specific things is, overall, what do you hope people get from listening and experiencing the Pool Kids self-title album? I just hope they like feel something, you know? I don't know. It would yeah. be cool to like evoke emotion in other human yeah. beings. <laughs> I hope the little music kids feel inspired. I hope the kids who like don't play music are like get emotionally attached to it. I hope like, yeah, I hope this is not just like a record kids hit play on and then that's that. From start to finish, is it is it an album that you should sit through from the first track all the way to the end? Is it one that you could throw on shuffle? Like, what do you guys think about it in that perspective? I, yeah, I feel like most albums you you should definitely listen from top to bottom. Like, I feel like every put, artist is gonna say every artist is gonna say that, and we put yes. a lot of care into like sequencing and transitions, and like mm-hmm. there's a lot of like really cool like sneaky stuff happening in between like every track and stuff like that they like but, blend together and stuff so yeah, i mean yeah, like definitely. at the end of the day everyone's gonna have their favorite songs and like <laughs> in like... the in the playlist playlisting like streaming era like there's no like controlling like how people like consume the album we're not just like limited to exclusively cd or vinyl but yeah. i really think that for those who have the patience to sit down and listen to the album from song one to song 12 12 thank you it will be, they will be rewarded. <laughs> That's my favorite way to go about it. I'm a big vinyl head. We'll talk about vinyl here in a little bit. And so I am looking forward to to hearing the work of art from start to finish. So coming up here on June the 14th, the band is releasing the next pre-release single. Uh, it will be out by the time this episode airs on Adobe Radio. So really looking forward to hearing that. Now, um, I think there's going to be a music video for this one as well. Is that correct? Yes, yes sure is. I'm awesome. more nervous for that than I am the record dropping. <laughs> okay, so so talk to me about that. Why is that? Uh, because I fuck a mannequin in the video. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're definitely going for shock value on this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask for you maybe to expand a little bit on maybe the messaging of this song and also why this track was selected to be another early introduction to the self-titled album. Um, we wanted to pick, when we were deciding the three singles, we wanted to pick one example of each of the kind of like moods I talked t- t- about, like, oh, there's typical pool kids, which we chose for Physics Baby. And then for one of the moodier tracks, that's I Hope You're Right, the single that's about to come out, we picked that one. And then Arm's Length, that used to be Coconuts, that's like the hype one. So we just wanted to pick an example of each. So that's where that decision came from. Um, I forgot the other questions you asked. Yeah, what is that? Uh, what are you singing about? Like, what's the oh the vibe of the video? Um, what's well, the song about? <laughs> the song is about um, I well, it was just inspired by I had a friend call me after like a date gone wrong, and it was just like weird boundaries like were crossed, and I don't, I don't know how else to say it, but um. I don't know she ended up like crying on the phone with me and being like this always happens like I don't know men not respecting boundaries things like that but and yeah then I just kind of like made a fictional song based off of that um conversation are a lot of your songs based off of experiences that you have or conversations that you have or or is there no kind of um conformity to that um 
it's yes and no there's like there'll be bits and pieces like oh this chunk of this song is like true to my life but then like I'll kind of craft like other fictional things around it that I feel like accurately address like emotions that I have but aren't necessarily attached to the situations I'm talking about um yeah I don't know it's kind of like making fictional stories to express certain emotions I would like to express I guess Speaking of music videos, there is an awesome music video out currently for the current single that's out. That's Physics Baby. Talk to me about how the band approaches the visual side of your art. And are there any memorable things from that experience, that video shoot for that song? This band fights and argues more over visual creative stuff than anything <laughs> like Sonic. Like, it's actually insane. Um I don't know how we approach. We just all have a lot of opinions. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all like pretty deep media consumers too. <laughs> like each of us has like, you know, this, this spectrum that we're like focused on and fixated on. We're like, Oh, we have to like yeah. incorporate this element in some capacity. Yeah. And so I feel like that reflects itself like quite a bit in the visual aspect of our band, as opposed to like, yeah. you know, the, the Sonics, um, not that it doesn't have an effect on the sonics as well but like <coughs> the visual thing is you know i guess it's like outside of our like primary wheelhouse mm -hmm. so there's a lot of conversation about like hey like you know what's the what's the look of this video like is it <laughs> is it gonna like blatant or not blatantly but like is it gonna accurately reflect like the vibe of the music or do we want to go outside of what the music is saying and make it like in the case of that's physics baby like it's more playful with like a hint of surrealism and the next music video is more like you know we <laughs> tried to make an a24 movie yeah. Or something, you know? yeah um kaden is very into the visual side of the art things of the band mainly for like merch and like album art and stuff not so yeah. much the music videos but... that's like the coolest part it's like a, a cool physical product. Yeah. 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 And making Physics Baby was a lot of fun because we went out to work with the producer who made the album and his <coughs> wife. Um, one of the things that they do, um, in like Mark Mike does, in addition to like pr producing records and playing in bands and such, is they also make music videos on the side. Oh, wow. Um, so when we found that out, we were like, oh, my God, it would be so much fun to like work with you again in some capacity. So they wrote like the treatment and such mm -hmm. and sent it to us and then we had a million revisions and like yeah. rewrites and stuff like that. And then they were like super collaborative and like, which is like a lot of like fun going back and forth with them and then flying out to Seattle to make that music video again. It was like really a blast. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was sort of a cherry on top of like mm -hmm. the whole process, you know, cause the album was done. Um, it sort of felt like, man, our next creative project together like might not be for a really long time. And it ended up like not only being out. like a month or so, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah, you guys are doing it. I mean, really, um, there's a lot of content, a lot of marketing, a lot of excitement, as we talked about earlier. So looking forward uh, to I hope you're right when it drops on June the 14th and the music video. Does it come out right alongside the single or is it spaced out at all? Yeah, all the singles are going to be like it all. <coughs> yeah, all I think that the song will probably be live, you know, midnight yeah. on Spotify and streaming, whatever. And then the I guess tomorrow video. night. Yeah. Oh, oh well, damn. Holy shit. <laughs> That's yeah. what we're talking about. Like, it, this is too fast. It just keeps, like, hitting us in the face. Yeah. It, uh, time is, is crazy anymore. It, it seems to be moving slow and fast all at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we, we, <laughs> we loosely mentioned um, merch, so I want to dive into that. I think your band has a lot of really cool merch in support of the self-titled album. Uh, one of the main items is, of course, vinyl. Uh, you have three different variants right now that I'm seeing, 180 gram in black. Baby Blue in Blue Jay Color and Color, and the now sold out tricolor striped pink bone double mint. Mm -hmm. I am a big vinyl collector myself. Anybody who <laughs> follows us on TikTok knows that. And if you look behind me, you can see a bunch of stuff back there. I can't imagine. I truly can't imagine. I used to play in bands a while ago, and all those failed, so I started a podcast instead. <laughs> I I can't imagine what it feels like to have a body band of work. podcast pipeline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, it was inevitable, I guess. But um, I, I honestly cannot imagine what it would feel like, at least for me, to have a body of work that I created on wax. To me, I just feel like that is so damn cool. Talk to me about how it does feel to release this self-titled album on vinyl. And 
Um, and are, you're already seeing some of these, at least one of them, sell out. How's all that feel? It's just, it's pretty wild. Like, just like support. Like, people don't have to do it. People don't have to like buy products from you, let alone like online. And I don't know, like, you don't know half the people. And it's just like really, it's just nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that feels nice. It's just like, it's crazy, like, feeling like, Uh, some like music is weird in that like you don't get a physical product at the end for it like you have a song that just exists and (laughs) and so forth and like getting the vinyl pressing is like in my opinion feels like the closest you can possibly get to like a painter is done painting and now they Mm -hmm. have a painting and like now we have like this here's the album in my hands Uh etc etc so I think that's really cool and I don't know I like started like digging through my parents and grandparents record collections back in high school so like I've been like like I on and off have been like collecting vinyl for like the last few years kind of like fell off for a little while but like being in a band that has vinyl like makes vinyl has been like a really surreal thing when I when it happened with the first album I was like that's freaking Mm -hmm. crazy and then once again like it's like hitting me all over again I heard it already ordered my copy nice. don't know when to get here yeah. <laughs> That's apologies just the to way anyone who ordered one and is waiting until the year 2023 <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's well, not yeah. i hope humankind makes it yeah <laughs> production is just so backed up right now yeah. it yeah. is it is and i actually want to touch on that real quick i mean obviously the 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 world circumstances have created not just within music and within vinyl but in so many areas really um, production delays, turn time, cost of materials, all these things, especially with vinyl records, have really been hit hard. I see a lot of discussions from bands uh, and, and and even more so labels about what is the best approach. Like, I've even seen labels kind of go on to, like, Twitter and post polls. Like, would you rather see a band announce vinyl alongside the album or would you rather the, the vinyl be announced when it's in hand? Uh, obviously, the band made the decision to announce vinyl alongside the album release. As you all mentioned, vinyls do sometime, I think I saw spring of 2023. Yeah. Uh, what were the discussions like um, around this topic and why did you land on the decision you made? We actually all agreed on that. I think. Yeah. yeah, it's just, it's been so long since we've put out music. And, like, it just felt necessary for us to have like, the body of work out before like a physical thing you know yeah Um, we couldn't make people wait you know exactly like another year (laughs) like by the time our record comes out it'll be i guess almost four years to the day almost four years to the day and you know in our world like you have to tour to survive Mm -hmm. and we needed to tour on new music like yeah it was (laughs) As, as we said, like we stretched those not nine songs out quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. This is the four year anniversary of tomorrow. Is we- it? Wow. Hey, congrats on that. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. No, no it's July. Because Star Squad comes out on, oh. on the, it's a month from tomorrow. <laughs> it's well, July. Then early congratulations on that for you all. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Do, do I- any of you four have a favorite variant uh, of this pressing of the self titled? I'd have to actually see in person because yeah, we always get surprised how it actually looks in person. Yeah. Um, I like really cared about the first pressings. So like three, the three different pressings, you have like your music listening one, the tricolor is supposed to represent the inside of the rainbow. And then the blue one is like the outside yeah. afterwards. It's fucking whatever. But I was like, <laughs> the first ones have to mean something in some kind of cool way. Yeah. yeah. And like Caden really pushed for the 180 gram just because he's like was very big on like sound quality has yeah. to be well, there. We like grinded really hard for like yeah. a really beautiful sounding record. And I was like, you have to have at least that option exist. for people who yeah. like are true vinyl heads. Yeah, you don't see a lot of bands doing that. I was I was pleasantly surprised to see that. A lot of people don't want to buy just a plain old black vinyl colored, you know, album either. But I am seeing some bands and labels lean back into that, and especially the 180 gram. And there is a difference. You know, there there definitely is a difference, in my opinion, when you listen to, you know, standard wax and one on 180 grams. So it's cool to see it. Yeah, we're like where the that record lacks in variant, it doesn't lack in sound. So <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, <clears throat> to finish off this discussion around merch, something else that I saw that you all were doing is this 60-page uh, photo book. 
And it looks just the idea of it. I love the idea of it. I think it's creative as hell. Talk to me about where this idea came from. Uh, what can people expect to see within it? And who was involved in, in creating this and bringing it to life? This idea was all Caden's endeavor. I think it was Sean, actually. He, like, approached uh, us because he was like, I want to, this to be captured. Sean is the label scalpel. Yeah. Sean, yeah, he wanted, like, all this captured. He's like, this is going to be, like, special. And so he wanted us to have a photographer in the studio. But at the same time, Andy and I both shoot film. And then Nicolette started shooting film. So it's a lot of photos from, like, our point of view of each other and some of, like, Ron, that the, the photographer's point of view of us at the time. So it's got photos of us, like, in the studio, photos of us, of us around uh, around Seattle yeah. and Portland, the flood. And then there's, like, a little Q&A inside of it as well. And there's, like, scans of, like, certain moments. Like, there's, like, a scan of a piece of paper that says, do you have any acid? And That like, was slipped to us under the studio by, like, a, a stalker. stalker. Yeah. Not, oh. our, not a stalker of us, but... Isaac, Isaac Brock stalker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So surprises in there. There it does. It sounds like there is going to be some surprises there. And there's even more merch. I think there's tapes. There's CDs. I saw a necklace. Uh, is it uh, off of one of the songs? Pathetic, right? Yes. Yeah. Can it's you a, grab it? The, yeah, it's one of the. Songs. Oh, you have one on hand. Yeah, yeah, they just came in the mail. I'll show you. To promise. Please it's- do. Um, another band that does really cool merch like that is Vile. I don't know if you've all listened to Vile before. Oh, the yeah. TikTok band. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, they, they do like these handmade earrings and stuff like that. Really awesome. We talked oh, yeah, to them earlier one this year. Too. Oh, yeah. I also embroider a lot. Yeah. This is the well, some embroidery pieces. Pathetic and- necklace. Oh, oh, look at that. Nice. A hand embroider. Oh, I love that. And the necklaces, I think, are limited to what fifty, if I'm remembering. Go, for, I'm going off of memory here. Yes, that is right. So everybody's got to get on those if you want to be part of that. I really like when bands um, do these little kind of special things, these releases and whatnot. So um, definitely go check that out. Where's the best place for people to pick up merch for you all? Coolkidsband.com. There we go. That's easy enough. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you all a little bit about uh, this tour that's coming up. So by the time this episode airs, you, I think, are going to be out on the road. Starting on June the 15th, uh, Pool Kids will be heading out on tour as main support for Into It, Over It. That's really exciting. Um, How do you all prepare for a tour like this, both like mentally, because the mental toll of touring is is real, and and how do you also prepare professionally? Are you practicing? Is that why you all or together yeah. besides the party last night and stuff like that. Uh, how, how do you right. go about prep, preparing for something like this? It's definitely like a system we have locked down because we're a long distance band. Her mm-hmm. I live in Chicago and he lives in Florida. He lives in Pittsburgh. Um, so we just meet up like a week or so beforehand and we just marathon practice um, the whole time we're together. So that's what we will be doing today after this. Um, that's it. We just, we just practice, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And yeah, and then I just like pack my bag and we go. <laughs> That's it. That's Are you <laughs> anticipating on playing mostly songs from the self-titled or will some previous songs trickle their way onto the set? I'm sure that, you know, you have limited time and whatnot, but I'm curious to your approach to that. Your show's a pretty long set. We have a 45 minutes. Yeah. Oh, so okay. Damn. 70% new material. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Is, okay. there a, is there a song off the self-titled that you're looking forward to playing the most live? All we've, of them. We've, I, I'm so excited to play all of them. Like we always talk about that exact question. Actually, we all have different answers. But um, well, let's let's hear them. Uh, is there have you landed on any yet that you're definitely like, yeah, this is the one? I uh, pathetic. I'm excited to hear. That's the the closing track, which we're not playing on this set. But I don't know. That's my most excited. Andy was really excited to play Comes and Waves. Yeah. which we are playing. Nice. Um, I don't know what are y'all playing. Oh, uh, always, 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 always better. Almost always better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Really yeah. excited for that. Definitely go check out uh, Pool Kids and Into It Over It. I'll have up on the screen here uh, the tour graphics. So check and see your date. I think that uh, one of the dates already sold out. What was that? Philadelphia. So mm-hmm. that's exciting. I'm sure more are probably trending in that direction. So definitely get on tickets to go see everybody. Uh, couplets on that as well, too. So I forgot to mention them. So definitely go check out that run of shows um this this is going to be my last formal question for you all and i want to thank you uh for being here and spending time with me and spinning thoughts and our listeners um 
for those who don't know, I like I I was debating whether or not talking to you about this because I don't know how often you actually get asked about the Haley Williams um, yeah. post. <laughs> And I'm sure it's probably a lot, but I, I'm going to take the opportunity to ask about it. So for those who don't know, in 2019, Haley Williams from Paramore posted about pool kids and the album at the time, Music to Practice, Safe Sex 2, saying this, quote, this is what P. Moore wished in all capitals, wished we sounded like in the early 2000s. Love hearing mathy, twinkly parts mixed with heavy moments. This kind of music will always be very special to me. Go see this band play a live show i bet they're so cool live i think i messed up i literally get like chills just hearing it again (laughs) that's like the best thing that ever happened to us yeah it's it's on it's unreal to me to um just um Haley williams paramore like what uh, an important voice um in not just our community but the music world at large i mean paramore is all over the place um like i said i'm sure you may have been asked this before but i was hoping you could reflect on that moment i know you just said you got chills um but reflect on that um what that comment meant to you all and does it mean anything to you still today yeah i mean me like personally she's an idol of mine of course i you know since those 12 and 7th grades was just like you know obsessed with her music and her and to have it's not it's not only the fact that she acknowledged her band it's the fact she said like this is what we wished we sounded like it's just like it feels like something that didn't actually happen you know what I mean um and it's just I like randomly think about it sometimes when I hear like Paramore playing in the grocery store I'm just like holy (laughs) fuck I can't believe that happened um I actually dm'd her afterwards just I was like this is my opportunity to talk to her you know hell yeah like I was like you have no idea how much this means like blah 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 and she was so Oh, nice. She like responded and just kept chatting with me, like DM, like she is so genuine and cool and nice. And wow. I, yeah, crazy. Wow. Another thing about it is that it happened on April Fool's Day. Yeah. And so you're right. Oh my God. It happened on at, April Fool's Day. I was at Starbucks doing homework and uh, my phone goes off and it's it's like Yaley Williams or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Williams. Yeah. Her, it's like tagged you in a post. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm like, weird and i thought i thought maybe it was like a fan account or something because cool yeah. kids obviously was getting lumped in to pair more stuff at the time they were like <laughs> oh girl vocalist yeah and so i yeah. thought it was like a like a stan account or like something because it's april fool's day then i'm like wait like i like i would not get this notification if like i wasn't following her and like all this stuff so like i swipe it and then yeah sure enough like i'm on her story and i'm like oh my god <laughs> so like i screenshot it and send it into the pool kids chat with like the label and the thing is christine was a teacher at that time so she wasn't on her phone so yeah. she didn't know for about, like, <laughs> oh. hours later. yeah that was the craziest thing to like come back to i was in a meeting like at the end of the day and i think i like peeked at my phone and they were like someone said something like don't like do anything until christine knows or something like that like wait for christine wait for... and i was like what and then i just scrolled and i saw like like Halloween's name and I was like <gasps> like what the fuck is happening and I just wanted to get out of the meeting and I finally got out and it was just like it was the, definitely probably the craziest day of my life also Do like you- she took a huge risk like she didn't have to post about us and like another thing is like we could be absolutely insufferable about it and make it our personality and- that's true that's <laughs> true like you could just be obnoxious about it and so like her just being like hoping that we weren't crazy or like just like taking yeah. that risk like it was it's incredibly nice she was um when i was like damning her you're like we're not annoying and i'm like punishing her in her dms <laughs> but um she uh she was like oh um she was checking our tour flyer to like see if she could like see us and stuff and that was crazy i'm like oh my god and i invited her to like the next show or two and but then she's like oh i'm playing bonnaroo i'm like of course you are <laughs> yeah and then oh i'm doing vocals for she had a very good excuse every time but and then i decided to leave her alone do you she- all know how she stumbled upon pool kids at okay. all i think it was the day we released are you familiar with pool Okay. Uh, we, wait, is this the, are you, you all do like, was it like the hardcore album or yes. something like that? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. For some reason, I completely didn't put those together. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we released that like that day yeah. right yeah. on April Fool's Day. And so there was a lot of like buzz on that. I remember and, that. Yeah. And so it was on the same day. So I think the buzz just crossed her path. Someone from like, yeah, Bandcamp. I think, I think uh, Zoe from Bandcamp also did a write-up on 
music to practice safe sex too on the same day because of pool because of pool yeah, yeah. Oh. and i was for just, those who don't know what pool is please well, you just said it it's the, the it's hardcore like, yeah, joke hardcore EP that we released yeah. on april Fool's Day. yeah and uh i was just also very thankful that she Haley williams like did the shout out on safe sex and not pool because <laughs> that would have i would have been like what a waste like you don't like our actual music you know what i mean but I, yeah i think she found out it was because of the pool hype but. are you is there plans to do anything like that pool album again or is that a one-off kind of thing i think it'd be i want, I want to do a pool i kids, want to do it again i want to do a pool pool kid split so bad and i'm fully back <laughs> i think we're, i think we're like 50 50 on that kate and i are very about it i don't know about the rest of the band the pool pool kid <laughs> split is seriously i think a genius idea like that i like that that sounds cool I don't know how Andy feels about it. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that's really cool. And I, I appreciate you uh kind of going down memory lane there with uh Haley from Paramore. What what a what an experience that had been. Um and it's just good to see the band um is rocking and rolling. We've got the self-titled release coming up on July the 22nd via Skeletal Lightning. So much to be excited about. The tour coming up, new single on June the 14th. Before we go, though, friends, uh, is there anything else that you would like to add? Anything else you'd like to say? Is there anything that I fucked up that we need to correct on the record here right now? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't think there's any. You killed it. Yeah. Thank you. I'll let you know if Jillian Carter doesn't want their <laughs> like, thing in there. Um, sleeping bodies. Yeah. But Andy's really good with words, so we'll let him do the closing section. statement monologue. Oh, please. Uh yeah. Love to be on the spot when I'm uh <laughs> horrifically hungover. Uh yeah, we just hope that the music like gives people something to hold on to, like a little reprieve from the uh you know, the mundane existence that we're all forced to to, <laughs> to endure. And uh yeah, I think um, you know. The girls say this all the time, but you know, it's it's really cool to see people inspired to like pick up instruments and and do creative projects on their own. So hopefully this inspires people to give it a shot. Anyone could do it. Yeah. Andy, you are a master with words. That was so that was so perfect. Uh so hopefully we see some of that, some some other uh wannabe or you know, soon to be, I guess is probably the better way to phrase it, soon to be yeah. musicians to pick up an instrument and to share their art with the world. Christine, Nicolette, Caden, and Andy, I want to thank you all seriously so much for taking the time to talk to me and for being here for episode 230 of Spinning Thoughts. Thank you. Love thank that. you. Awesome. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Once again, I want to thank Christine, Nicolette, Andy, and Caden of Pool Kids for being my guest here on episode 230 of Spinning Thoughts. Make sure you go pre-save, pre-order the self-titled album. It releases on July the 22nd via Skeletal Lightning. They're on tour right now with Into It, Over It, and then they're going to be on tour later on this year with Origami Angel. While you're finding out all the information for that stuff, make sure you follow us on all social media at Spin Thoughts. We we have a website where you can check out reviews from over 10 or 12 or 15 contributors that we have here on the team, thespinningthoughts.com. Premiere episodes every Thursday at midnight Eastern on Adobe Radio. Do not forget to leave a like, leave a comment. Are you excited about everything that Pool Kids have going on? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you're subscribed on your favorite podcast platform. And we'll be back again, same time, same place. Until then, make sure you share music, spread love. <laughs>